I was wrong about short rest times being bad for muscle growth. That's what came out of a recent study I was involved in. Let me explain why. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science. Contrary to popular belief, still involved in actual science. No, YouTube is not my full-time gig. As part of my ongoing work within hashtag science, we recently conducted a meta-analysis on rest times for muscle building that revealed things I didn't think were true. But first, let me give you the takeaways from the previous video I made on rest times. First, based on the data, I said that resting for less than 60 seconds or so for growth is definitely worse on a per set basis than resting for more than 60 seconds between sets. I also claimed that resting for at least two minutes between sets was probably a good thing for growth, at least when it comes to maximizing the potency of each individual set. And these takeaways were based on a systematic review by Gurdjieff and colleagues on rest times from around seven years ago. I also generally made the claim that three minutes of rest between sets was probably even better than two minutes of rest between sets. However, based on a study by Longo and colleagues that compared one minute of rest between sets to three minutes of rest between sets, when in the one minute condition, participants did more overall sets to make up for the reduction in volume load by those short rest times. I also came to the conclusion within that video that if you do only rest for say a minute or two between sets, you can make up for the reduced potency of each individual set by just doing more sets. So those were my takeaways from this previous video. It turns out though, many of those were wrong. And let me break down how. In the next few days, as of the shooting of this video right here, there will be a pre-printed meta-analysis by Singer and colleagues on rest times. One of my roles as part of the publication of this paper was to extract the data from each of these individual studies, so I got to take a close look at the results of each individual study we included. There were nine studies in total. A meta-analysis is basically when you take the results of each study, as far as the numbers go, kind of crunch them together, crunch the numbers, and find one more conclusive result that incorporates all of the results from all of these studies. Essentially, by pooling all of these studies together, you're able to have a bit more confidence when it comes to your effect estimate. How much of a difference is there, for example, between resting for less than a minute versus over a minute, etc. We performed a few different analyses on this data set. First, we performed a pairwise comparison of all of the shorter rest time groups to all of the longer rest time groups. Every study included one shorter rest time conditional group and one longer rest time conditional group. We just grouped all of those together and then compared them, seeing does the longer rest time group generally see better results than the shorter rest time group? And that's where we performed a network meta-analysis, where essentially we categorize each group and each condition from each study into how long they rested for. And then we plot this out and see how much rest generally resulted across these studies in the most hypertrophy. We categorized rest times into being one minute or less, between one or two minutes, between two and three minutes or over three minutes between sets. Resting for one to two minutes between sets resulted in the most hypertrophy on average across these studies. Resting for under one minute between sets resulted in the worst growth out of the four groups. When you went above two minutes of rest between sets, say between two and three or above three minutes of rest between sets, you maybe saw worse growth. The difference was small enough that I personally wouldn't read too far into it. Then we also looked at how results differed if we exclusively looked at studies training the arms, for example, versus the thighs. Essentially, upper body training versus lower body training. Personally, I like resting a little bit longer when it comes to leg training because I become a little bit more gassed compared to upper body training. And although it was a very small potential minor difference, generally, longer rest times were a bit more beneficial when it came to the lower body versus the arms. In this meta-analysis, we included both studies that were volume equated and set equated. Volume equated studies matched for volume load between groups or conditions. So that would be sets times reps times weight being the same in the shorter and and lower rest time group. And so that would generally entail the shorter rest time group doing more sets to make up for the reduced performance in each individual set to arrive at the same total volume load across the session. We also looked for studies that were set equated, essentially doing the same number of sets with a shorter or longer rest time. For example, three sets with three minutes of rest between sets versus three sets with one minute of rest between sets. Importantly though, only two of the nine studies included were volume load equated. So the vast majority of the studies included equated for number of sets. This is important because in the real world, if you're doing the same number of sets with a shorter or longer rest time, one, you will likely have a reduced performance with shorter rest times, and two, if you do use shorter rest times, you're in and out of the gym faster, or you could use that additional time you just saved to do more sets. So because most of the studies in this meta-analysis were set equated, it seems that resting for one to two minutes between sets is beneficial for hypertrophy, even when it seems to result in a slight reduction in performance on each set, 
and even when you don't really make up for it by doing more sets. And in fact, on average, across all your muscle groups, etc., resting for one to two minutes between sets might be ideal for growth. So if you're resting for less time, should you still be doing more sets to make up for the reduced potency of each set? Let me break down the results of the two volume low liquid studies to try and get an idea of whether or not that's true. Because ultimately, that was one of the takeaways of my previous video on rest times. First, we have the aforementioned long way towel study. They had four conditions using the unilateral leg press. In one condition, they rested for one minute between sets. In the second condition, for three minutes between sets. In the third condition, they rested for one minute between sets, but equated for volume load by performing additional sets until the same total volume load was reached as in the three minute condition. And finally, in the fourth condition, they rested for three minutes between sets, but only did as many sets as it took to match for volume load with condition one, resting only one minute between sets. So essentially, comparing condition one and two is a comparison of rest times while being set equated. Meanwhile, comparisons of condition one and three and two and four are comparisons of rest times when the volume load is being equated by doing more or fewer sets to make up for it. Three minutes was better than one minute between sets when it came to maximizing hypertrophy on a per set basis. However, doing more sets with one minute of rest negated this difference altogether. So resting for one minute or less may indeed reduce the potency of each individual set. And that's basically what our meta-analysis found as well. The second study is a study by Hill, Haas and colleagues, and here's what they found. They compared around 20 seconds of rest between sets to about 80 seconds of rest between sets. Once again, in the 20 second rest group, they did more sets to make up for the loss in performance on each set. And if anything, when making up for the loss in volume load, they saw slightly better hypertrophy when resting 20 seconds between sets as opposed to 80 seconds between sets. So in the volume load equated studies, things didn't consistently favor longer rest times, which makes sense. And this is all well and good. But one common claim is that trained lifters will need to rest for longer between sets. And there's a couple of rationales there. On the one hand, as you become stronger, you're able to lift more weight for the same number of reps. For example, your squat goes from 135 for 10 to 315 for 10, thereby increasing energy expenditure and increasing central demands, for example, on your breathing, your heart, blood flow, etc. On the other hand, as you become more trained, even lifting will make you more cardiovascularly trained. And so while you might be lifting more, you should also be fitter. So there's kind of two rationales that contradict each other. What does the evidence on trained lifters actually say? Well, we have three studies that were included in this meta-analysis looking at trained lifters. First, a study by Schoenfeld and colleagues in both the upper and lower body generally found more favorable muscle growth when resting for three minutes versus one minute between sets. Second, we have a study by the and colleagues in both the upper and lower body once again, comparing 80 seconds of rest between sets to about 120 seconds of rest between sets. In this study, if anything, the hypertrophy slightly favored the lower rest group, resting only 80 seconds between sets. And finally, we have a third study by Souza Jr. and colleagues also finding the same thing broadly speaking. In the upper and lower body, when resting 80 seconds versus 120 seconds between sets, more favorable hypertrophy was seen with 80 seconds over 120 seconds. So two of three studies generally favor the shorter rest time condition when resting about 80 seconds versus two minutes. And the final study found greater hypertrophy when resting for three minutes versus one minute in trained lifters. So once again, when you take the overall picture here, it seems that one minute or less, probably not ideal for hypertrophy, even in trained lifters here. However, when you get to rest times of say one to two minutes, as in the studies by D'Souza and Souza Jr., that seems to be very effective. So even in somewhat trained lifters, it seems like one to two minutes is really effective for hypertrophy. So it seems I was wrong about rest times. And here are my recommendations based on this most recent paper. As far as individualizing rest times, here's what I would do. I would break down exercises into four categories. Upper body isolation, upper body compound, lower body isolation, and lower body compound. On average, for upper body isolation movements, I would rest for about a minute between sets. For upper body compound movements, I would rest for about one and a half minute between sets. For lower body isolation movements, I would rest for about a minute and a half between sets. And finally, for lower body compounds, I would rest for about two minutes between sets. This is all in the context of muscle building. Because most of the studies in this meta-analysis were set equated, meaning the shorter rest time group likely saw a decrease in their performance by taking shorter rest times, this means that you likely don't need to be perfectly recovered, or even most of the way recovered, to get a good hypertrophy stimulus from a subsequent set. So just because you don't feel perfectly ready to go for your next set, doesn't mean you're missing out on hypertrophy. If you're resting for less than a minute between sets on average, there is a decent chance you need to do more sets to make up for the reduction in performance. However, if you're resting for one to two minutes between sets, 
there's a good chance that you don't need to do more additional sets to make up for the reduction in volume load. It's still a possibility and we don't have a ton of evidence there yet, but I would say you're probably fine to not do any additional sets if you're resting for one to two minutes between sets. This paper's conclusions for hypertrophy is great news for people who are short on time. You can see great hypertrophy even resting for less than a minute between sets. And you'll probably see your best hypertrophy resting for one to two minutes between sets. And so a 20 to 30 set workout may only take you around an hour or just over an hour. And that's a super effective session. And the final takeaway is I was wrong. And I'll readily admit when I'm wrong on this channel if the evidence comes out and says as much. My YouTube channel is a place for you to get the best information possible. And that's why I do it. Just kidding, that is not why I do it. And let me sell you my new product called MyoAdapt. MyoAdapt is a training app coming out soon that is designed to essentially be your evidence-based coach in your pocket at a much lower price tag. Whenever new evidence comes out that's important for hypertrophy and how you should train, we make sure the app reflects that. For example, based on the results here, I went into the app and made sure the logic that is used to design your training program is using the appropriate rest times to maximize hypertrophy. The same thing happened when it came, for example, to the longer muscle length research. The app sorts exercises for you based on which ones are most effective based on the existing literature. This app is coming out in just a few months and will be a fraction of the price of many coaches out there. It'll provide you with an individualized program aimed at muscle building that gets better week upon week based on your feedback. And this is all coming out soon. So if you're interested, check out myodapp.com to sign up to be notified when it comes out. Conversely, if you'd like me to coach you, check out the coaching at my website above and we could become coach and client. If you like the video, please comment, like, subscribe. Let me know down below if there's any other topics you want to see me cover from an evidence-based perspective. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.